Hey friends, it's August. Welcome to Cozy Rosie Reads. This is the start of a really fun reading vlog because it is Sunday morning. My mom and I are going on a little vacation this week. So for the next few days, we're actually gonna be traveling a few hours outside of our city to a place called Leelanau. It's a peninsula in Michigan, and Michigan itself is a peninsula, but this is a peninsula within a peninsula. And we're gonna go camping at a state park but not your typical type of camping. My mom has completely renovated her soccer mom minivan into like a traveling camping van. There's a fully functioning like kitchen and a sink and a bed in a minivan. She's amazing. So she has invited me to go and travel with her for the next few days. So I just wanted to give a little precursor as to where we're going, what we're going to be doing. I really enjoy traveling with my mom because we have a very similar itinerary kind of style where we like half of our trip, we really like to be adventurous and outside and bike riding, hiking, like checking out the local towns, going out to eat. Then the other half is like chill. <laughs> like she was like, bring a bunch of books. We're going to have some hammocks. Um, and we're just going to relax outside in nature. I believe it's probably about like nine o'clock. I've been up for a few hours. I actually just finished reading a book that I'll talk about in my June wrap up. It was really enjoyable, which is perfect that I finished a book this morning and had enough time before I had to start getting ready for this trip because now I can start a brand new book on this trip, which excites me to no end. I love starting a new book while starting a new adventure kind of thing. Like it's just the best feeling for me because that book then every time I think about it will always remind me of a trip, you know? I know what book I'm gonna be starting with and I planned this ahead of time. Like once I figured out my June TBR from my TBR jar, which I'll link that video down below if you haven't had a chance to watch it and see my process for picking out the books with my TBR like challenge jar. I knew as soon as I picked that one, that was the book that I wanted to bring on vacation because it's like perfect for spending time outside in nature maybe even a little spooky i already put my bookmark in it but i have not started it yet is annihilation by jeff vandermeer this is a book that my friend loaned me and she said i would probably really really enjoy it because i love books with like nature elements psychology like oh this just sounds like so much fun and what's really cool is that she annotated it too which I just love reading other people's annotations. It's so cool. And this is just a gorgeous copy. I love this like iridescent green. And then, oh, look at that inside. That is beautiful. So this is the book that I'll be starting with um, today when we get to our campsite. I just have to pack a few more things for this trip and then I'll be all set to go. I also want to say too, not that this is relevant or something that I should be ashamed of in any way, but this entire trip, I'm not bringing any makeup. And I just wanna make it very clear that I have cystic hormonal acne. Hi, I am 26 and I still have hormonal acne. I just wanna make that apparent and obvious. It's something that I have learned to really love about myself. I think acne is quite beautiful now. I used to hate it. Two years ago when I first got acne, I never had acne growing up or as a teenager any at all, like even through puberty, which I'm very blessed for. But two years ago when I started getting really horrible cystic acne because of my hormones and stuff, I was beyond, beyond embarrassed, beyond um, self-conscious. And I've just gotten to a really, really good point in my life with my skin and I find the imperfections really pretty and I don't hate them anymore. So I just wanna make that apparent. YouTube is a visual format, it's a visual thing. There are no filters on this channel. I don't edit or color code my videos at all and I just wanna be real and raw and natural with you all. And I also hope that it helps anyone out there who also struggles with cystic acne that like, it's okay to show your face like this and it's totally normal. And, and I, I love my skin, you know, like, like, I can't help the hormones in my body. And I've been put on so many different, like, medications to, like, try and control it, but I realized that those medications, specifically birth control, that was the only reason I was prescribed birth control is for hormonal acne. It messed with my moods so horrendously. And while I do still have days where I'm just really frustrated with my skin and feeling really sad about it, I've just really learned to embrace it, and I love now that I'm able to be completely medication-free 
it feels so much better for my mental health like eons better than what I was at before for my mental health so I don't know I just want to be really candid about that and transparent on here because I am fully aware that I have acne but I also kind of like don't really give a shit anymore and I think it would be really cool to see more youtubers showing off their acne and maybe just not hiding it. You don't have to show it off, but like maybe just don't hide it. So I'm going to be completely barefaced for this entire video. I'm really excited to give my skin some fresh air. Obviously, I'll be wearing some sunscreen every day though, but just some like nice northern Michigan fresh air on my face. No makeup, nothing to like cloud it up. So I'm going to go ahead and get ready for the rest of the day and then we can go into some traveling montages. Thank you all so much for being here. I appreciate you all so incredibly much. I hope you're doing really, really well and I hope you enjoy this reading vlog.
that backdrop? It looks like I'm in a fucking green screen. Yep. <laughs> Thank you.
okay with Bernie? Yeah, that's how you okay. do it. kind of low because I am in a public campsite and it is morning time. I don't want to wake any other campers up. I have with me my hot coffee. It is a very chilly Tuesday morning. This is our last night at our camp, unfortunately. I haven't been able to update you all because it's been so much fun and so busy. I've definitely been focusing on taking more montage shots. There's a lot of birds right now. I had a little bit of time this morning at our picnic table at our campsite to fill you in on what's been going on, what I've been reading, what happened. Yesterday was so freaking lovely. When we arrived at our campsite, I started reading Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer, and now I'm over 100 pages in. I am like more than halfway. I would love to be able to finish this today, but I'm not sure I'll be able to finish it um, before we leave the campsite this morning, because we're gonna be leaving pretty early and then driving to another town. My coffee, too hot to drink yet. That's pretty hot. <laughs> I'm thoroughly enjoying this and having so much fun with it. I think this is a series that I could definitely follow up with. I don't know what it is specifically about this year. I've just read intentionally or unintentionally a lot of the first books in series without any thought as to like if I'll continue them or not or any like desire to continue them. But I feel like I could definitely continue this. I'm really enjoying it. And yesterday, my mom and I also started an audiobook. I went on to Libby and I was looking for like a four hour audiobook just so that way for our drive back home to today. Oh, I can't believe we're leaving today. <laughs> and I picked literally the freaking best book. I have never heard of this book. It seems incredibly underrated, but it's so good. And it is called The Swallowed Man by Edward Carey. And this is a retelling of Pinocchio, okay? But it's all written from, what's his name, Geppetto? Geppetto's perspective as he has been swallowed and he's writing in the belly of the whale that, you know, whatever. So he's, it's just really eerie because it's him writing by candlelight in this like whale's stomach. And he's like talking about his son and you know in the back of your head his son is like Pinocchio. And then he talks about the origin story of Pinocchio, which is really funny. Like, it's just a perfect blend of, like, kind of creepy horror feelings, um, and then, like, just a lot of solitude and loneliness, him just being so alone in this belly of a whale, but then it's just really freaking funny. Like, it is, it has been laugh out loud funny. The audiobook is amazing. It's read out loud by the author, but he has such a theatrical voice. It is so entertaining. It feels like you're just, like, listening to a play or something. It, it's so good, it's only four hours long, and it is one of the coolest retellings I have ever listened to. My mom's really enjoying it. It's just making our drives so entertaining. Oh my God, I really love this book. Like this is a huge five-star prediction for me, and I had never heard of it before. It came out last year in 2020.
I am home. I made it home last night. I'm back home. It feels so good. And when I got home last night, my partner surprised me with these beautiful flowers. How nice is he? I'm just feeling so incredibly grateful this morning to be home, to have had a wonderful like getaway for just a few days, explore some new places in my state. I could gush forever about how wonderful the people in my life are, but I don't I don't need to do that right now. Otherwise, I'll just turn into a mush puddle. It is really, really severely cold in my apartment this morning. Um, so if you hear me like kind of stuffy nose, because it's so cold, my nose is like numb. <laughs> my fingers are just warming up right now. I have them tucked into my sleeves. It is not even 9 a.m. yet. I have been up for a little bit. I've been up for three hours. I've been up since six and I was able to finish this morning. Annihilation. I was able to finish it this morning. This was so weird and I liked it. I liked it. It's so different than the movie. I really hated the movie. <laughs> I hated the movie. I thought it tried so hard to have like a symbolism, tried to have meaning. Oh, so we're just so surreal. We're just surrealists. <laughs> it tried so hard for me. Like it was just kind of cringy. I do still think that there are redeeming elements in the movie. I'm not saying it's 100% bad. I personally, for my taste, I liked this so much better. This has the actual more surrealist questioning of are we really relying on our main character's perspective right now? Because they seem a little unhinged. Um, what they're experiencing, is it real or is it psychological? Is it something fantastical? or is it something really sinister? There's just not a whole lot of reliability in this book and I love that. So my friend was so accurate because her and I were talking about, you know, what kind of books we really like. And I had told her, I was like, I really like when you can't tell if what's happening is real or if it's like magical realism or something like this where nature is like taking over and has its own kind of motive. The ending was so vague and I was like, oh, and there were so many times where like my heart was definitely pounding a little faster, like this was very suspenseful. The writing style felt very eerie because of that, like sometimes it would just kind of like pick up speed. Sometimes it felt extremely repetitive and I realized it's because, you know, we're reading from this main character who is probably having a lot of repetitive thoughts. Um, I just thought overall it was really, really well done. I thought it was super fun. I definitely don't think that this is for everybody though. I feel like if you're going into this thinking it's like a thriller suspense, that's probably not super accurate because this is a lot more psychological. It's like a microscopic view of something or like a story that could be a thriller suspense, if that makes sense. Like this could be an action packed book. The author just chose to do a microscopic view of this kind of sci-fi world that could have been elaborated on and I'm sure is elaborated on in the trilogy. But this book itself is just like such a narrow viewpoint of what's happening. Like you don't even get much context as to the world around what year it is. Like you, you're just thrown right into it. And I, I just really enjoyed it. So I haven't thought much about a rating, probably like four stars. We'll see in the next few weeks if I continue to think about this book, but I just had so much fun reading it. It was so easy to read. I like flew through it. It was just so much fun. Yeah. So. I finished that this morning. Alas, I was not able to finish my audiobook, The Swallowed Man. Uh, my mom was getting a little agitated with the narrator's voice <laughs> when we were listening to it on our drive home yesterday, which I totally understand because he is very theatrical and it's definitely, you know, after listening it, to it for like over an hour, we were both like, okay, I think we need a little break from this guy but I am still enjoying it. I think I'm gonna continue listening to it slowly over the next two weeks. It's only a four hour audiobook, but again, he's very theatrical. So either you're in the mood for it or you're not, and that's totally fine. And now I would like to share with you all some of the goodies that I got on my trip, okay? So first off, I do wanna shout out to this sweater. This sweater I did find at a consignment store in one of the harbor towns. It has this, these are like giant patches, but it's this amazing tiger. We have some flowers, we have this beautiful moth, right? And he just kind of goes along the shoulder here. We got some flowers there. And then on this sleeve, we have another moth. And then we have some flowers. The first day, the only full day we had there, we did go to the consignment shop, the same one where I got this, and I did find a few other goodies I'd love to share with you all. The first thing that I found, <laughs> I love this so much, is this painting. Ah! I'm trying to get it so like the, 
glare isn't trash. I'll, I'm sorry, this is so weird. This is a painting of a rabbit with radishes. I'm sorry, the glare is so bad. I just love this so much. I love this painting so, 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 so much. It is so colorful, it's so whimsical. So yesterday when we were exploring Fishtown, um, which is that place that I did a little montage of, they had just kind of like this waterfall and it looks like a town that's just right on a canal or like a lake. My mom had been there the year before with my dad and they had told me that there was this older man who ran a bookshop from his house. And when my mom told me about that, I was like, can we please go? Can we please, please go? I want to go to there. And so we walked, we found it, and it was just somebody's house, and it just has a sign that said books this way. You had to like ring a bell because no one was downstairs, and this older lady came and like turned on the light, and she was like, welcome! And she was just so happy and cheery, and she was like, come on in, come on in. Literally, oh, I included the montage earlier, but while I'm discussing it, I'll show it to you all again so you know what I mean, and realize that this is the downstairs of a house, they had their own personal like bookstore and library. There were so many first edition books, a lot of really rare old used books, some really amazing wide variety of fiction books that I cannot believe. Like the amount of fiction books in there that I wanted to read was insane. There were so many books that I had never heard of before. They were just so incredibly eclectic and and from so many diverse authors and they were all like within the time period that I love reading from like the 70s to the early 2000s. Oh my gosh, it was so, so cool. They were definitely a little bit more expensive, but that was totally fine. Um, and while we were in there though, we were talking to the woman and my mom was saying how, you know, we were here last year and I think your husband helped us and she let us know that he passed away in November. Um, so my mom and I were very upset. It was kind of emotional being down in the basement um, because the older woman was definitely breaking my heart a little bit, pulling on my little emotional heartstrings. But the books that I did find and take home are so cool. I cannot wait to read these. Like I cannot wait to read these. Then we went to this amazing shop that uh, I definitely did so many montages of because it was the one that had the stained glass absolutely everywhere outside. It was like the most magical shop I have ever been to in my life, hands down. This place, like the outside and the inside, just reminded me of Howl's bedroom in Howl's Moving Castle, the movie. Like all of the shiny, eclectic things, the different sounds, the different textures, the colors. Oh, everything looked like candy and everything made me want to eat it. So while I was there, I absolutely fell in love with one of the artists work there. I'll include it here in a montage, but I did end up getting my first ever like clock, like an actual clock. And it's this cat clock. Look at how cute it is. Oh no, it's so adorable. It is like a flower pastel cat. My mom got the same one as well because why not? It's super cute. It goes so well with my apartment because we have so many white colors and pastels in this apartment and it's just so cute. I brought it home and I was like, oh, please let my partner like this. I, I really don't want to bring something into the house if he really doesn't like it, but he was like, oh my God, that's amazing. So bless. And then from the same artist, I also got this planter. It's a cat planter in the same kind of style. So I'm gonna go, next time I'm out grocery shopping, I'll just get like a nice little plant to add into this cat. Oh my gosh, friends. I think that's it. I think that's all I wanted to share at the end of this vlog. But overall, like what an amazing past few days it's been. I really loved just being outside. I've never really gone camping before. This was kind of my first time. I just loved being outside for that much of the day. You know, we did like a 10 mile bike ride. We walked so much, just explored and just saw the sights and towns and nature. Like I, my heart really needed it. My soul needed it. I feel so refreshed. I feel so good. Thank you all just so incredibly much for staying tuned. I really, really hope you enjoyed this vlog. I really hope you enjoyed just seeing some of the beautiful landscape of Michigan, how freaking gorgeous it is. If you've ever thought about visiting or if you live nearby to Michigan, I definitely highly recommend giving it a visit because it is absolutely stunning. I really do feel like overwhelmingly grateful that I live in such a beautiful place. Like that's something that 
I feel very privileged and feel very humbled um, to be able to live in such a beautiful state that I feel like has been really, really well preserved. So yeah, there ends my gushiness, friends. Thank you so, so much for being here. Thank you for staying tuned. I really, really do hope you enjoyed this fun vlog. A lot of montages, a lot of outdoor scenery. I hope wherever you are, you're doing incredibly well. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or evening or night. Thank you so incredibly much, friends. And I will see you all very soon for my next video. Stay cozy, my friends. Bye!